So when we left off in the last video, we discovered a ton of corrosion on the board, both top and bottom, including traces that are literally just falling off of the board. Um, I'm going to impose some footage now, but I went ahead, um, didn't bother recording too much of it, but I went and soaked it in some uh, distilled vinegar, white distilled vinegar, uh, sprayed the top, and then on the bottom I put this sheet, I don't know what kind of material it is, it's almost like a cottony type paper, just to kind of like have it soak in, and while that was soaking I went and scrubbed and scrubbed, and well as you can see this uh, GNS9330 chip still has a ton of corrosion on it. And I don't think uh, I'm going to really clean that off really. Maybe vinegar isn't going to be strong enough. I might need to use something else. Uh, I still have this weird port down here that I have yet to identify. J-V-E-O-A or whatever that was. I still haven't figured out what that is. Um, it's got some corrosion on there for some reason, so I have to finish scrubbing that. And I have not looked at the bottom of the board just yet, so I figured we could do that together. All right, let's take a look. Considering there is some contaminants on the paper itself. It definitely needs to be scrubbed. Of course, I don't know how the traces are. I don't know about the vias or anything like that. Some of the through holes still have some corrosion on them. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Um, this trace here also looks like it has actual rust in it, not just corrosion, which is kind of bizarre. But there's also some traces down here which did not really suffer much damage. It looks like they might be eaten a little bit. I don't know if it's coming through on camera or not, if it's light enough. Let me see. There. So there's some traces here and here. What I'm going to do now though is I'm going to give this an isopropyl alcohol bath to neutralize the vinegar. And then we will uh, put this under a scope and see exactly how much damage there is. And the furnace kicked in, so I apologize for the background noise. I'll try to do what I can with it. Or you got to dry because it's definitely uh, still wet, even though, it's, even though it's isopropyl alcohol. So in the meantime, let's take a look at the uh, video card and some of the other components. Uh, it's your typical Crystal Sound Blaster Pro, Sound Blaster 16 compatible, probably. It's got the uh, an official Yamaha OPL YMF262 chip, so that's good. FM synth should be good. Not sure about the sound quality overall. Crystal is pretty decent, but it's no uh, no Sound Blaster or uh, Roland or anything like that. So yeah, pretty basic card though. It's got an ID port on there, uh, CD audio. It does have. Uh, an option for PC speaker rerouting, but that's uh, there are no pins there. Could probably put one in there and then add some resistors and go from there. Uh, it's a MIDI, I think it's a MIDI wavetable card. This is just an expansion connector for custom cards from Aztec. Not sure what kind of features it would come with, but looks like there's another speaker connector here too. So there's that. Look at the processor. It's an Intel Overdrive 486, 100 megahertz, DX40 DPR100. Looks like it's from 1993. Uh, more than likely, it was an upgrade because I'm pretty sure the original computer came with either a 25 megahertz or 33 megahertz processor, and it was probably an SX processor. This is a DX, but it's your typical Overdrive processor, voltage regulators, things like that. This one doesn't require a fan, unlike the uh, Pentium processors and the Pentium Overdrives do. Here's the VGA BIOS. Not sure, other than the version 1.3, I'm not sure when this BIOS came out, but it's version 1.3 and who knows if that's the latest version or not. Then your typical ISA riser card, this would more than likely work in multiple different computers. So, one's manufactured by Amphenol. It's just got some filtering caps on here, stuff like that, typical riser. And then we've got the RAM. We've got this one here from Texas Instruments. Looks like the, at least the PCB was made in Italy. Not sure if the entire chip was. Uh, yeah, TM248NBK36U. This one 
could have been manufactured 27th week of 1997. That is possible because these were still in use at the time. So, and then the other chip was this one from Toshiba, a lot more densely packaged. Uh, it's a THM 32-2020-AS-70. So there's that, and we'll look at the hard drive again. It's the ST3668, 545 and a half megabytes, so standard IDE drive. And then the last component here is this modem 2400 baud. Not very fast. Um, fortunately, we don't need modems anymore. I know you can still connect to BBSs with them and experiment and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna be doing that myself, so. All right, so I wiped it off. There's a little bit of rust still there, but it's mostly gone. I also used the opportunity to touch up a few other spots as well. It'll do for now. Not sure though <laughs> how long it'll stay rust free since I can't uh, spray paint it right now because it's winter time and spray paint doesn't do too well in the cold. So I also used a little bit on the optical drive. Most of it gone here. Didn't do a great job there. Did okay here. Probably have to again sand it or something. All right, so let's take a look inside of this thing here and see if. Uh, have to worry about anything. I'm hoping not. Hoping it's just these four screws. Usually <laughs> there's only four holding them together, right? I think that's it is just those four. Oh. Looks well, relatively clean except for a little bit of dust. I really surprised. I figured there'd be a lot more in there. Um fan for sure has got some dust on there, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. A little bit of dust here and there. I don't see any signs of leaky capacitors caps on caps as well as Marcon or Maron or Moron or <laughs> um, everything looks good I don't see any refills or anything like that in here pretty sure by now they stopped using them so it's hard to say there's a capacitor here that's probably the filtering cap hard to say because I'm not an expert I don't know if there's a fuse in here though. That's. Oh, yeah, nope. There it is there, and it looks like it's intact, but let me double check. Oops. Yep, alright. So the fuse is intact, so, I mean, give it a little bit of a cleaning, and in theory, that should be it. I can give it a test and uh, see if the system powers on at all. Yeah, everything looks good otherwise, so get, get the air duster in there and a little brush, clean it up a bit. Hopefully the fan doesn't need to be lubricated, looks like there's only one screw holding it in place. Unfortunately, it looks like it's soldered directly into power directly, which is, sure, why not, save a penny or two. So even if I wanted to replace it, I'd have to splice in and whatever. I'll give this a cleaning and I'll decide if I'm going to power it on or not. The board looks like it's pretty much dry. Uh, there's definitely still some corrosion in areas. Uh, I'm going to have to do something about the ports with the rust, either... I don't want to use that uh, rust remover because I don't want it to get inside of the uh, pinholes. Uh, I will probably just sand them or something and then maybe use like a silver paint pen to protect it. 
earlier, you may have noticed I was messing around with this jumper here. And that's because it won't come off. It is probably corroded, glued onto it. So, or however you want to call it. But I was able to remove it with some pliers and it, there's definitely some corrosion there. I've got some extra jumpers, so I don't have to worry about repairing that one. But what we need to do is attempt to clean some of the corrosion on there. I'll just use some IPA, set a soaking in vinegar again, and have to go through the entire cleaning process. The rest of the jumpers did uh, remove easily. I went through them and checked just to be safe. But the area with corrosion is, uh, well, we can see. And on the other side, Still some corrosion there, so I'm going to try some IPA and see if I can't lightly brush more of it away, although some of it's probably under the traces, which is not a good sign. So I'll do that and get it as clean as I can. As uh, you can see, it really didn't help much. This GNS9330 chip is still got tons of corrosion, as well as these three resistors in this one capacitor, two, three capacitors, four. This array of resistors here might be uh, bad as well. The bottom is the one that's going to be more concerning, of course, because while I've got all of the white corrosion off, there's still all of the green corrosion, various different vias, traces, things like that. This is going to be not a fun repair attempt, and I might not even be able to do it. At least not with my skill set. All right, well, let's uh, let's just see if it works. Maybe I'll get lucky. Uh, let's go ahead and add some RAM. Connect the front panel LEDs just so that I can see any activity is the power supply. So I can put this in the frame so we can see the power LEDs and be disappointed together when this probably does not work. All right, and uh, power LED works, so it's getting power. Nothing on screen though, so that could just be, I also don't hear any beeps, although I don't know how long it would take for a beep to appear. Let me double check the jumpers, make sure that they're in the right places. And I think that's it in terms of jumpers. So. Let's see. Still don't see anything on screen. Still in power save mode, so there's nothing happening. Kind of wish I had an ISA graphics card just in case the graphics isn't working right, but again, you would, should be able to hear beeps. I think uh, eight of them. We're not getting anything otherwise, so. It almost definitely has to be something due to the corrosion that is here. And uh, as we know, <laughs> some of these chips and components are just not cleaning up the way I was hoping I could get them clean. I don't have a postcard, unfortunately, to do any of those fancy diagnostics with the host codes and everything. So I can't say for sure. I do have one on order, but it will not be here in time. So we're gonna have to wrap up this video because it is long enough as it is, and there's nothing to show for it. And as such, there's going to be a part three at some point, possibly, if I do either get that postcard in sometime soon so that I can 
determine exactly what the issue is. Again, we know it's going to be this, but I want to be thorough. Uh, or if I get brave enough and decide to try and replace some of these components and traces and everything, of course the issue is going to be getting one of these chips if I can identify and see if they're still available somewhere. Identifying this chip here, figuring out the values of these resistors and these capacitors that are here, as well as this little array as well. This chip here, and even though I got almost all of the corrosion cleaned up from the chipset here, there are still some there, and possibly, as some of you commented underneath, I do not want to desolder that because I will almost definitely lift some pads up, especially on this side here, which has the corrosion. So it's also possible, like I said before, that this is just a lost cause. Fortunately though, I can salvage the RAM, the overdrive CPU. I've got a uh, AT power supply, non-standard format, but I have one. I also have then this fancy little ISA riser card, which is, again, should be fairly universal. Got a small hard drive, 500 meg. I smallest hard drive I have right now is 1.2 gig. So that'd be nice for retro systems, provided that it works. An extra floppy disk drive and optical drive if both work. And um, yeah, that's basically it. And a nice little case if I can find a replacement board. The only one that I can find right now on eBay is the same board with the same amount of corrosion, unfortunately. So that's kind of a no-go. There is the, at according to this here, the 440 and 440T, which should be the same format. If I can find one of those, I can drop those in. Otherwise, uh, that'll be it. I might throw up another video for DOS number just to kind of make up for this one being a, I don't want to call it a failure. It just, you know, we have to continue on and there isn't enough time to continue on with it. So keep an eye out for that. And that said, if you guys have suggestions, if you have any tips for cleaning this mess up without needing to replace the components, although I'm pretty sure someone would have mentioned something by now. But if you do, let me know if you have any leads on a replacement board that might still be in good shape. Let me know. And otherwise, uh, thanks all. And I'll catch you later.